Home Assistant has had another amazing year with so many changes happening all over the project in 2024. So as the year comes to an end, we of course have to take a look back at some of my favorite features that happened throughout this year to see how far we've come, but also to show off some features that you might have missed during the year that you want to take advantage of in your setup. So these are my top 10 features of this year. Let me know what your list looks like down in the comments below and let's get into it. First though, I do need to blow my own trumpet. Uh, and if you remember last year, we took a look at the growth of Home Assistant over the year from the public analytics site. And last year, the year ended with 300,000 users with statistics enabled. And I predicted back then that we would end up with 439,000 users by the end of 2024. And if we take a look at the stats as of today, we ended up with a grand total of 435,000 users, which firstly is a really impressive 45% increase in just one year, which is super cool. Love to see that much growth. But also, I absolutely nailed it. I'll probably never get that close again, but I am going to say that we are going to hit 644,000 users by the end of 2025. A little bit higher maybe than we would expect, but I have faith in Home Assistant that they can do it. Uh, and let's make this a tradition and check back in a year and see where we are. The first entry on our list is coming in at number 10 and is a neat little feature that dropped back in the September release of this year. And for some of you, it may have flown under the radar, but for those of you who love to track energy usage, I know you loved this feature in particular, and it was the addition of untracked energy usage. This seems like a really simple addition, but to me, this is a really helpful feature to track down high energy devices in your home, especially important today in the UK and much of Europe, for example. Basically, the way this feature works is that if you have something like a smart meter in your home that tracks energy usage for your entire house, and then you have sensors that also track individual devices such as your fridge, lights, washing machine, and so on, this new feature will take your whole home usage subtract the usage of all the known devices, and it will now report the untracked usage, which wasn't shown previously. And this is a really great way to instantly see how much power all of your other devices are using. Number nine was a brilliant quality of life feature that landed back in the April release, which was the new filters menu. If you've been using Home Assistant for any length of time, you'll quickly find that there are quite a few places in the UI that have very long lists, like the device page, the entities page, or even the automations page. And scrolling through these lists to find what you need could be quite tedious if you had a large install. But with the new filters menu, it makes finding things so much quicker with multiple different ways to narrow down your search, such as by category, label, area, and more. It's one of those things that's kind of tucked away and might not be so obvious if you're a new user, but definitely a great feature to take advantage of if you're looking to power through those lists. If there is one thing tech in general has been dominated by this year, it was of course AI, and Home Assistant was no different with number eight. Now, technically LLMs were first introduced last year, but it wasn't until the June release of this year that they got really useful with the LLM control feature, which actually allowed LLMs to control devices in Home Assistant, whether that was a local LLM like Olama or something like ChatGPT or Claude. And basically you ask these LLMs to turn lights on, set temperature, close blinds, and so much more, but in a more natural way without having to stick to a specific phrase or sentence. So seeing LLM actually be able to control devices inside of Home Assistant was a really big feature that landed in 2024. Another big theme in Home Assistant this year was dashboards, and our first of several dashboard-related features comes in at number seven, which was added in July, and that was resizable cards. Now, we're going to talk about sections later, but resizable cards was an important feature of the new dashboard layout in Home Assistant, as is hopefully pretty obvious. 
it allowed you to resize your dashboard cards in a much more granular way to perfectly suit your dashboard. Related to this feature was actually the precise mode card added in November, which allowed even more granular sizes and also the full width mode card that was added in September that allowed you to make a card the full width of an entire section to get that dashboard looking just right for your smart home. Coming in at number six was a much requested feature for voice control in Home Assistant and that was also added in the July release and it was timer support. I've learned from speaking to friends who are casual users of Google or Amazon that one of the things they use it for the most is for timers. And I would guess that this is true of a lot of users. So adding the ability to create timers with your voice inside of Home Assistant was a really, really important addition. The only thing I'd love to see would be some sort of timer entity inside of Home Assistant to allow for more automations, but perhaps in the new year, we will see that kind of thing added. Also, being able to give your timers names would be really, really cool too. Getting into my top five, this feature came from the April release once again, which was labels and categories, a big new way of organizing things in Home Assistant. Labels can be used all over the UI inside of Home Assistant, from automations to devices, and they serve two main purposes. Firstly, they let you group things together and use the filter feature from earlier in the video to quickly find relevant items inside of your lists, but also they can be used in scripts and automations as a target for an action. So for example, if you want to quickly and easily target all of your lights that have the Christmas label assigned to them, you can do that with the labels feature. Categories are localized to certain pages in the UI and can be used to group together automations, scripts, scenes, or helpers. And they can also be used in filtering, but also for collapsing and expanding sections inside of these menus. These combined with the other new organization features like floors give you lots of power to organize in the exact way that you want. Coming back to AI once again, number four just arrived in the very last release of the year. And for me, this was a huge, huge feature for voice. And this was the LLM fallback feature. So in previous releases, when you used your voice with Home Assistant, you would either set it up to use Home Assistant's local sentence handling or you could use it with an LLM, but not both at the same time, at least officially. With this new feature though, you can now use the default voice to send it locally to Home Assistant first, and if it doesn't recognize what you are asking or you ask a long sentence or a phrase or a query, it could automatically pass what you said to a configured LLM to answer and handle it for you giving you the best of both worlds. And for me, this added huge capabilities to voice in Home Assistant and was a game-changing feature because it combined the fast, immediate response time of the local sentence handler with the huge knowledge base and the fuzzy sentence matching of LLMs as kind of a safety net, which in real world use, I found to be hugely important for our next feature which was of course the big events that happened on December 19th, the official release of Home Assistant's voice hardware called Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition, which was a fully fledged smart speaker that was ready to go out of the box with voice capabilities, meaning no need to build your own device and make your own firmware, just take it out of the box and it's ready to go. The response to this was absolutely amazing and it was really cool to see the community excitement over the release of the Voice PE. And it's a really important release in order to keep improving and building a local private voice assistant by giving users hardware that they can actually use and test and give feedback with. I also like that it was exactly two years to the date after they first announced that they were going to be working on voice in Home Assistant that they released the official hardware and yeah, not technically a feature, but this was a hugely important release of this year for a lot of people. Coming in the second place spot, you might have guessed this one already, back from the absurd release that was March, 
it was of course drag and drop dashboards which has to be maybe one of the most mythical features in all of Home Assistant history over the last few years. This feature allows you to drag and drop cards in your dashboard to move them around, rearrange them any way you like until your heart's content. Something that was surprisingly difficult in years gone by with the way dashboards used to work. We also got drag and drop in other places too inside of the UI like the automation editor which made it possible to rearrange actions and conditions and triggers inside of your automation just effortlessly, all of which improved the user experience in a big way for new users, which makes it my number two pick. Finally, my favorite feature this year was added all the way back in March and goes hand in hand with drag and drop. And this was of course sections, which is basically the name for the all new dashboard layout inside of Home Assistant, which finally saw a really nice, clean, modern dashboard layout that you can actually predict where cards are going to be on different screen sizes, which sounds like a trivial thing, but if you've used Home Assistant in previous years, you would know how big of an issue this was and basically required you to develop different dashboards for different devices, which could be pretty tedious if you had, say, a desktop, a tablet, and a phone in your smart home. Since the release of Sections, we've seen improvement after improvement in seemingly every release, including setting max columns, conditional sections, resizable sections, and so much more. And it finally exited beta in November, along with a conversion tool for your old dashboards. For me, dashboards was one of, if not the area in most need of improvement in Home Assistant last year, and this feature absolutely nails it for me, and I think it's going to get even better in 2025. And that's it from me for this video and for this year. That is my top 10 favorite features from Home Assistant releases for this year in 2024. I would love to hear which one made your list down in the comments below. Honestly, it was really hard to pick just a top 10 only because there was so much great stuff for everyone in the throughout all the releases in this year, which was just really, really cool. All that's left to say is thank you so much for the incredible, incredible support as always on videos and products and the shop and just everything. I do feel amazingly fortunate to be a part of this community. It's really, really, really awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great new year with your family and I will see you in the next video in the next year in 2025.